Welcome to the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry channel. I'm Maynard Edwards, 32nd degree KCCH, Scottish Rite Freemason, your host here on the channel. Take a second if you haven't already done so and subscribe. If you're a Mason, you got to drop a comment below. Give us a thumbs up and please do share the video and don't forget to turn on those notifications. If you're able to help out with our Lost Media Restoration Project, click that join button and become one of our Lost Media Archive members. We've got some brand new archive levels and one of those archive levels is the collection level and it will get you some really cool Scottish Rite swag including this coin that features on its reverse brother George Washington taking his oath of office speaking of brother George Washington the house of the temple is not the only extraordinary Masonic building in the Washington DC area right around the corner in Alexandria is the George Washington National Masonic Memorial. This is an incredible Masonic building built and dedicated to George Washington, his life and times as a Mason. And really it's dedicated to all Masons around the country. It's got an extraordinary Masonic museum inside of it. And it's truly a bucket list item for all Masons. This year, the memorial celebrates the 100th anniversary of its cornerstone laying, which was laid November 1st, 1923. And it was a huge, huge ceremony back then. As a celebration of the 100th anniversary of that cornerstone laying, the George Washington Masonic Memorial is hosting a huge parade and a cornerstone rededication ceremony, and you're invited to come and be a part of it. Check out the web address on the screen, in the link above, and also in the description below to find out more. There is a Masonic Lodge that meets inside the memorial, and they've been meeting there since 1945, although they've been around much, much longer. Alexandria Washington Lodge number 22. It's actually the lodge where George Washington was the chartered worshipful master. So this is George Washington's lodge, and they fittingly, in the mid-40s, started meeting inside the memorial. This lodge has an extraordinary history and they are going to be well in the middle of all the events happening on the weekend of February 17, 18, 19, and 20, 2023. To get some inside scoop on all of that, to get the fascinating history of the lodge and to, to get a peek inside, I got to sit down with Brother Chris Rooley, the historian of the Scottish Rite Valley of Washington, D.C., who joins us all the time on the channel, and the worshipful master of Alexandria Washington Lodge, number 22, Brother David Gabriel Bella. He is the sitting worshipful master, and so he's the guy to talk to to find out what's happening with the memorial for the rededication ceremony and finding out some of the extraordinary history of this lodge. Worshipful Master, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you for it. First of all, where exactly, like, I got, people think the house at the temple is big and easy to get lost in, yeah. but this place is pretty big and easy to get lost in. Where the heck are we in, in terms of space in this building? Sure. So we're, we're on the second floor of the George Washington Masonic National Memorial uh, in the South Lodge Room. And we're in the ante room of that lodge room. And uh, our lodge meets here every second Thursday. And we've been up here since the 1940s. So, Chris, what is Alexandria Washington number 22? The, the 22 makes me think this lodge has been around longer than the 40s. As, as my go-to historian on things, what is the history? I'm looking at a, a, a charter over there that says 1783. So explain the, the, the numerology masonically, if you will. Sure. Well, you got the master here, so he's going to confirm if I'm wrong or not. Okay. So, uh, so 1783, lodge is chartered through Pennsylvania. So about five years, they're operating out of their Philadelphia or Pennsylvania charter. As the Worship Master says, they get a new charter because they're basically rolling into the Grand Lodge of Virginia. Um, and for most of its history, they were downtown in Alexandria. They were actually meeting in the old Market, market uh, Square building. Uh, and until 1940s, as the Worship Master said, they were op occupying in that space. Um, they occupied uh, the space as well as a museum. So it was a Washington museum as well as a sort of, not just Washington, but a collection of American history, right? So you're talking about Washington artifacts, American history artifacts, uh, Native American artifacts, uh, things from, items from, you know, uh, Europe that were collected, and it sort of operated as the Alexandria Museum that just so happened to be operated by Masons that just so happened to have a lot of Masonic connections to George Washington. Is it at all overwhelming to be the, the chief steward as the master of the lodge? Is, you're the chief steward 
of this lodge's history, which is not unremarkable. Sure. It yeah. It it takes a lot of work. I mean, we have a gift shop, and so we have employees. We have a an extensive uh, collection of archives. We employ an archivist, uh, committee meetings, traveling, doing uh, just normal lodge stuff. Uh, receiving Good guys coming in with microphones and wanting interviews. Right, exactly. So yeah, we get a lot of cool things, but you know, I think the core of it and the things I'm most excited about is just being a normal lodge, doing degree work, helping the community. This is the anniversary of the cornerstone of this building. So, you know, not, m some past masters, some masters are serving during, let's be honest, uneventful years, somewhat uneventful years. So there's a lot more pressure on David right now because he's, a, you know, a notable past master serving in a year where there's a anniversary for the cornerstone of this building. So 1923, the original cornerstone was laid by uh, the President of the United States and Supreme Court Justice Taft. Back then, it was a huge celebration, and, and hopefully this February, it's going to be a big one, too. And th there's the one thing that concerns me at all. February in the Mid-Atlantic is the most unpredictable month of the year. We could be waist deep in snow. Sure. Well, I think they did that strategically because the Conference of Grand Masters of North America are going to be in town in Crystal City. Uh, and then on February 20th, they're going to reenact the 1923 ceremony. And uh, so it's going to be a big, uh, big to do. And there are going to be lots of great visitors and lots of memories made. You asked about certain people. I think there are four people that popped in my head. Uh, Worshipful Denislav Dantev, who was actually ahead of me uh, in line last year. And I actually, uh, he actually leapfrogged me. Uh, going through the line together years ago. So shout out to Denny, uh, the host of the Grand Lodge of Virginia host committee, right worshipful Mike Bible. Uh, he's been a great resource. Yeah, yeah. Yep, trusty, just kind of one of the old past masters that really helps out. Big deal at the, and this is Scottish Rite Channel, it's a big deal at the Scottish Rite Valley of Alexandria. Great guy, we love working with Mike. Sure, sure. Uh, so Tyler Van Ice, uh, who is the head of the town's birthday parade. So totally operating outside of masonry. He volunteers his time as the head of the uh, planning commission, which is a huge, huge, one of the biggest George Washington parades in the country. Uh, and then, of course, George Sagers, who is the executive director and, and has spent you know two decades of his life serving this building. And, and all three of those organizations, plus Denny, have, have really set a good example for uh, being a gracious host. Dave, could you talk a little bit about the parade? Because it sounds like, based on what I'm hearing, it's not a Masonic, I mean, yes, Masons are participating, but there's a little bit more to that. So February 20th is uh, President's Day, and the George Washington Birthday Parade here in Alexandria is one of the biggest George Washington parade celebrations in the world. Uh, and because it's, this is his hometown, right? And so usually it has a very community service uh, bent to it. This year, I think it's going to be a little bit heavier on the Masonic uh, side. So we're expecting uh, a couple thousand Masons to be marching in the parade. So we're going to be marching through Old Town, uh, up the hill, and it ends here at the memorial where uh, we wait around a little bit and then the Grand Lodge of Virginia, the Memorial Association uh, is gonna be hosting the reenactment, the cornerstone reenactment that day. So what is it that brought you to the door of a lodge to knock on that door the first time? I think two things. I mean, my grandfather was a Mason. Uh, he moved to Costa Rica and left his, well, our family apron in the garage um, because he knew it was very flat, fragile, didn't want to take it down to Costa Rica with him. And I asked my, my mom, you know, what is that? And she told me about it. And I was just like, you know, when I was 10, 11, 12, I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll do that someday. Um, so I moved, literally, I walk up here uh, and I moved in the shadow of the memorial and I was like, well, this is about as good of a time as any. Um, so that's one. And then two, so a family connection. Two, you know, I kind of really like that idea of this uh, founding father idea that everybody's equal, everybody is uh, on the level, and people treat each other fairly, irrespective of rank or title in society. So that was something that really drew me to it, and, you know, I haven't been disappointed. It's fun, you know? I mean, I enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, I enjoy it. I come up here every Thursday night and Saturday morning, and I see people who I want to spend time with and who men I really respect, uh, enjoy, keeps me out of trouble. Um, and, you know, I just really enjoy it. And I really have bought into the principles that masonry espouses. And, and you know, it's a great social outlet, too. In Lodge, we're very formal and serious, but outside of Lodge, you know, come get a beer with us. We're not, we're not highfalutin anything. You know, I'm just a kid from Mississippi, right? So uh, we, we try and uh, be very serious and formal in the lodge. Outside of the lodge, we try and uh, have a good, diverse representation of, of the city that we represent. Now, Chris, you and I have talked a number of times about 
why Washington, why this one figure has carried through the American zeitgeist for so long. And we, we've said that he represents so many different things. I mean, one, he was, as a military leader, he's undeniably just... He's bad. You know, he was a bad man. He, 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 he knew how to get things done. And then as a, as a servant leader later on, he, he really was, he took that humble position, you know, I don't want to be king and things like that. So um, for folks who didn't catch it before and, and our thoughts on this, why Washington? Why does he endure? Well, I think I think the principles that he espoused, just as David mentioned earlier, um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of responsibility there. And he took that responsibility and said, well, there's a, there's a set of values and principles to live by. And he followed those principles because he sort of knew, he sort of was pushed into this position. He, you know, his posi position where he could lose his life, he could lose his property. He was dealing with a lot of, you know, uh, un frankly, unknown issues to us because we're not dealing in a situation where we're going through independence. So he was put in a very strange and uncomfortable position. He then took that leadership he saw the difficulties, he made those difficult choices, you know, he was out in the battlefield with, with his troops who were, you know, not properly dressed, uh, you know, lacked resources to even fight. And so he went through those struggles, he then joins a, or, or forms a country, there's infighting, there's politics, there's argument, but he sort of serves as that standard, that principle to continue. And that's one of the reasons why the memorial sort of values those principles. You know, a lot of people say, oh, this memorial was built for George Washington the Mason. Not technically, that's not true. It was George Washington's virtues and his principles. And he just so happened to be a Mason and just so happened to be constructed by Masons. So I, I think this building is an embodiment, a, sig a significant, you know, embodiment to those principles. At the same time, it just so happens to be affiliated with one of the organizations that he, he may have not been super active in, but he certainly certainly respected the principles and he saw that those principles are being carried out and proliferated to other people. Yeah, and that's the one criticism that a lot of even Masons will make towards the Masonic attachment to Washington is that he didn't sit in many lodges. He didn't, you know, he didn't, it wasn't a regular part of his, uh, you know, monthly to-do list was, you know, go be in lodge on the second Tuesday. Hey, but that's, well, but being a Mason's not about sitting in meetings. It's about how you live. It's about accepting these values. It's about embracing that brotherhood. And there are definite examples of that throughout Washington's life. Yeah, I mean, even after he, so he leaves office. He gets invited by Alexander Washington, hey, when you're back in Alexandria, we'd love to have you for dinner and participate in an event. Now, it's not written in the minute books, but we find records and newspaper accounts of that dinner, of him attending lodge, of him participating in funeral ceremonies and other activities. So when it really mattered, right, like for the cornerstone laying of the United States Capitol, when it really mattered, when he knew this was important for me to be there, I'm going to be there, but I'm only also going to be there dressed up as a Mason, as a, as a regular Mason, not, you know, sitting as the master, not in a position of venerated status, but as a regular guy like everybody else. And I think there's a lot of, a, a lot of good value there. How about you, Worshipful Brother David? What, why Washington? What, what is it that is that appeal to, to this man who's been gone for over two centuries now? Yeah, I think um, my mind goes to a quote by Joseph Ellis in one of his books called His Excellency. And basically he says, to paraphrase him, he says, uh, you know, all the other founding fathers were more educated, more intelligent, more eloquent, and better read, right? But Washington by far was the unanimous choice to be their leader. And everyone agreed that he was the greatest of them all. Um, so that unknowable characteristic of Washington is really, um, you know, inspires me to investigate him every day or emulate him every day too. Uh, and, and with respect to the masonry aspect of it, you know, and, and this lodge in particular, he, um, he lent his name and he knew what he was kind of signing up for when he agreed to be worshipful master of this lodge. Um, was he here every Thursday night like me? Probably not, right? But he knew that the legacy that that would uh, entail, and that's why we are here today in this, you know, formal room with a 300-foot uh, memorial dedicated to him, right? So uh, he's just an inspiring man, and um, he's, he was a great mason. So in this building, with so many artifacts, with so much history, uh, whether it's related to Washington or just related to Freemasonry, oh, brother historian, what... Uh, do you have a favorite artifact that when you come, you just like to kind of glare at while you're here? Well, probably my favorite is the painting of Washington. That I love that painting because it's Washington in his true self. You know, William Williams 
uh, I think it was a Philadelphia painter, uh, actually asks, can I please commission a portrait of you? He declines his first attempt, and he says, no, I'm not interested. You know, this is during his darn paparazzi. He's, well, <laughs> That's a good, that's a good one. Um, and this is during a, you know, a time when he's very busy, focusing on anything else. I don't have time to sit for a portrait. He says to, I think it was General Knox, um, Henry Knox, uh, I will only sit down for a portrait if it's for a society or for the benefit of some other organization. Williams then, I'm not sure, really, we don't really know what the connection is, but William then goes to a lo uh, Alexandria Lodge and basically says, I'm interested. The lodge says, great, they fund the, the, the commission for the painting, and he sits down with Washington and paints him. But he paints him in such a way, and I'm not sure, Matt, if you have a portrait of Washington hanging above us, you can see. Yeah, um, but, you know, Washington in this portrait, very regal, thin, sort of, you know, photoshopped, as we will say, right? But the way Williams presents Washington here, I call him Grumpy Washington, because it's, it's as he is, he's sort of sitting down, he's got his jewels and ephemera, but the painter w depicts him in his true sense. He's got his pot marks, you can tell, he's got a little, a little gruff. He's an old man, he's aged. He's, he's received the wisdom and experience of a long life and a rather unique life. And I just really like that portrait. Now, people might say, ah, it's a little weird or interesting, but to me, I think that best represents Washington. Even if he can do so many other things, he chooses to sit down at the, the request of the lodge, wears the lodge's regalia, and, and is noted as a mason and he, this is a lasting gift to his lodge. And that's something that passed by, that has been there and has passed to you know, ownership and stewardship of the lodge ever since. How about you, Worshipful Brother David? I mean, symbolically, whether you're sitting in the actual chair or not, symbolically you are occupying a chair once occupied by George Washington, which is, is very cool, I, uh, ter terribly jealous. But, no, I'm serious, you know I am. <laughs> it's, everyone knows I am. I, I not, make no bones about it. But uh, how about, is there an artifact? Is there something here that when you walk in that you really connect with, with that history and with that man? Yeah, I think my, um, I'll go the exact opposite of Brother Chris. And what that is, is uh, three new paintings that we have displayed. And we just recently put them up three, four months ago. They're tracing boards, and they are a modern uh, uh, interpretation of what the three degrees today mean. Um, and it kind of contrasts that beautiful 1780s portrait with uh, a portrait done by an in-house artist, a member of the lodge. Wow. Yeah, uh, Brother Demi, shout out to Demi. Um, you know, he did those himself. The lodge commissioned them, and they're kind of a modern in interpretation. I like modern art, I guess, so maybe that's why... Uh, uh, I like those. So if you if you want to come check those out, you, you have to sit in lodge because they're kind of hidden from view if you're just poking your head in the lodge room. But uh, yeah, they're on the north wall of of the lodge room. What I was hoping is we can we can wrap up here. And for folks who are interested in learning more about AW22 or about the George Washington Memorial, what's the best spot for information? Yeah, check out aw22.org and the uh, Cornerstone Celebration. There's a prominent tab in there, GWMNM2023. It has a list of all the events that AW is hosting and hope you can come join us. My thanks, of course, to Brother Chris Ruley, as always, and to Worshipful Brother David Gabriel Bella, Worshipful Master of Alexandria Washington Lodge Number 22. You can look them up on online, aw22.org. And when you're there, they've got links prominently displayed on their website that are going to get you all of the information for the Cornerstone rededication and the parade happening February 20th. But we are going to live stream it right here. So if you can't get to the Washington DC area, if you can't make it to Alexandria, don't worry, you're going to be able to watch the parade and the Cornerstone rededication right here on our YouTube channel again, February 20th, 2023. In our next video, which will be out very shortly, we're going to get a look at the actual Alexandria Washington Lodge number 22 lodge room and some of their most famous artifacts. And after that, we're going to talk to the brother who is in charge of the parade and the rededication ceremony and find out how all of that is going to work and how you can be a part of it. So make sure you keep an eye on this channel for those videos. Best way to do that, make sure you're a subscriber and turn on those notifications. Masons, I expect you guys to drop a comment below. I'm Maynard Edwards, 32nd degree KCCH. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you again soon. This list of names that's going by right here, 
These are our Lost Media Archive members, and we've got levels that fit every budget. By joining, you're supporting our effort to digitize Masonic media, some of which is close to 100 years old. I'm talking about records, reel-to-reel -reel tapes like the one you're seeing play in the background here, uh, old VHS that nobody really even knows what's on it, all kinds of lost media. We're buying the equipment, we're restoring it, and we're digitizing it. And if you join the archive, it will be made available to you. And we've got archive levels for every budget, as I said, and we've got a collector's level where each month we're gonna send you a piece of swag that we have found in the archive. This month, to celebrate the George Washington National Memorial that is going through its cornerstone laying that you heard in this video, we've got a coin that features George Washington taking his oath of office. And if you join at that collector level, we will send you one of those just for being a part of it for the month of February. So do check it out. We appreciate your support. And if you can't support us, that's cool. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, and support us that way.